Hey, real quick, so if you're prepping for your civil FE exam, you can download a free study planner in the link below. So this study planner is organized by weekly study time blocks. So each day, you're gonna set your weekly or daily or every other day time block to study, because we know you're a busy engineer and you cannot afford to rely on the idea of just sitting down and studying. We have to schedule our study sessions. We have to schedule these study time blocks, and most importantly, be more intentional about our studying by noting what we're gonna cover, what section are we on, what will we cover that day, what practice problems, how will we cover that? Are we gonna look at the lesson notes first, cover concepts, cover flashcards, make flashcards, and also what time. So what time of day is best for you that you're fully focused, you have that energy to just put in that quality study time. And this study planner will help you do that. Any study plan will help you do that. So you can get this in the link below. So take it slow and study, enjoy your Christmas, and let's get some practice in. Welcome back, we got a simple horizontal curve problem. Please pause the video, do this on your own, and see if you get something close to what I get for the length of curve. So try this, struggle through it, and see if you get an answer that I get. So now let me run through this with you. So we know that a horizontal curve has a radius of 600 feet. So keyword, we're working with a horizontal curve. Its radius is 600 feet. So already I wanna denote what I'm given. I'm gonna do that on the side. So we're given, the radius is 600 feet. And it says the bearing of the back tangent is north 70 degrees east. So that is for the back tangent. We'll go into that and see what that means. So the back tangent, back tangent is gonna have this bearing angle. Let me denote the bearing. We can use like the beta for bearing to denote that Greek letter beta. It's gonna be north. 70 degrees east. Now, it says, and the bearing of the forward tangent is south 45 degrees. So the forward, forward tangent is going to equal, the bearing angle for that is beta, and that is south 45 degrees east. So now, the length of curve is most nearly what? So we wanna find, find the length of curve and let's call it L in units of feet. Fill in your response in the blank. So to fill in the blank, they're common nowadays on the FE. We wanna get an answer. We either round up or just put that range they usually have will be just fine. So in this case, we might round up at the end to get the length of curve. So now how would you do this? We know, okay, we have a horizontal curve. That's what we're working with for our solution. And in the handbook, we have a diagram that shows stuff about a horizontal curve. It's a simple one, but it's gonna be on this page in the latest handbook, horizontal curves. And I would say the big points are going to be the PC, the PI, and the PT. And all of these are defined in the handbook. So the equations you must be familiar with, know what each one means. And in this case, we're not gonna use all of them. In fact, we're just gonna use one equation to solve this and find that length. In our case, I want to note that the length is going to be where? Where is that used? Not here. So this is LC. That's not this L and C. They're sep. They're the same. They're together. That's the length of the long cord. That's not the same thing as the length of curve. So the length of the long cord is this. It's like a horizontal length between the PC and the PT. So that is different than the length of curve. So the length of curve. Let me denote that in blue is actually this. It's at the actual length of the curve from the PC to the PT on the curve. So the PT point is on the curve. Sometimes the PT point is on the T line, on the tangent line, that's different. So we know we're walking around along the tangent. We hit that PT on the T line sometimes. That's like in the back, in the back on the T line. When we're looking at these curves, the PT that we wanna deal with is the one on the curve, on the parabolic curve. So just note that. So now we have that as the PT and that we're, we're not gonna use. Just note, this is not the one. This obviously we won't use, it doesn't have the length in it. This one's actually the one we will use to solve this. So this is our handy equation. This is the one we will use. So none of these we will use. So this is out, that doesn't have L, this doesn't. 
So C here is also out. L, just know L is the length of the subcord. It's the actual curve length for the subcord. So in the handbook, they denote like the, the cord length. This is the cord distance. It's like a straight distance is C. Then you have a length along the parabola for the subcord. So it's the length along the parabola for a subcord. That would be lowercase L. And this one, the last one is out as well. This is the one we will use. Okay, let's get into the solution. So what we will do is draw the horizontal curve first. And just to visualize this, do this with me. Start drawing this. So we can approximate the shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're drawing a parabola. I found drawing like parabolas and all that easier with lines, like dash lines, instead of doing it at one go. So then it, we want it symmetric, but this is, I think, okay, that's good enough. Then what we will do is draw this forward. So not forward. So this is a tangent. I'll define that. And we also have another tangent like that. No, when they say tangent, it's like at 90 degrees. First of all, this is 90. This is 90. And also it touches the curve here at one point. In fact, like these are the points that we're usually looking at the PC and the PT. And then you have this point is called the PI, point of intersection, an important point. So then we can further define this and we'll get into these as well. Is where is the back tangent? The back tangent, remember, is always what we start with. It's the initial tangent. You can remember this like this. This is how I remember. So we know the middle is the PI. The one to the back of the PI, with respect to the PI, is the back tangent. The one forward with respect to the PI is the forward tangent. So what this means is this is our back tangent. I'll just call it back. This is the forward tangent. I'll just call it forward for that one. So back and forward tangents are those. So then it says back tangent has a bearing angle of this. So you have to remember the bearing angle definition. So recall that we have angles here. We either have azimuth or bearing. In this case, we're working with a bearing. This is north. This is going to be east. This is west. This is south. So we know the bearing in this case, north, 70 degrees east. So it's saying start at the north and we go 70 degrees to the east. So we start at the north and go 70 degrees to the east. The east is to the right. So this would be 70 degrees. That's how we have to visualize that. So if we visualize this like this, on this diagram, I can start with a vertical line here which is what I usually do when I'm doing bearing or azimuth. Start with the regular north, south, west, east. And then I'm going to say that the bearing angle for that back tangent is actually this. I'll use this color. It's going to be this angle. And this is 70 degrees because we start at the north, go east 70 degrees. So that would be that bearing for the back tangent, the initial tangent. So now the forward tangent, let's do that one, has a bearing of south 45 degrees east. So this one's a little tricky. So this one you might be thinking, okay, let's actually visualize this on this. So we start south, we start in the south, and it says go 45 degrees east. Start south and go 45 degrees east. East is to the right. So we're going in that case like counterclockwise and it will look something like this so it has to hit that line in that manner now based on that we can do that for the forward tangent so what we can say okay this is north in this case we're starting from the south so bearing can start from the north or the south either one works so we know it's going to be the 45 degrees and it would look something like this let me use blue and it's south south 45 degrees east. So it's actually this angle of 45 degrees. So just know it hits the forward tangent. So let me extend this just to show us that it hits that. And that would be our forward tangent, this one. So now we have those denoted. And that's probably the hardest part. The next step is to look at the geometry and focus on the PI. Focus where that's located. So we know that this is 45 degrees here. And I can say this, I think you would agree that we could, if we draw like a vertical here, 
strictly vertical towards gravity, towards the center, we know that 45 degrees is there. This has to be 45 degrees. So based on our geometry, that's 45. That has to be 45. Also, I can say this. If this is 70 degrees, what is this? That has to be 70 degrees. So pause the video if that doesn't make sense. If this is 45, this is 45. If this is 70, this has to be 70. Why this is important is if we have these, we can find this. What would that be? It's actually a special angle. It's called our I, the intersection angle. So what we can do is go down and see that here. This is the intersection angle. So we know we have this, we have this, how can we get I? Remember when we have a line, and let me denote the line like vertically, you have an angle here, you have an angle, what's this total angle? This total angle is 180 degrees. So that total angle is 180 degrees. So I can take the 180 degrees minus 70 minus 45 to get the intersection angle. And that's the trickiest part about this whole question. So let me do that in the calculator. I'm using the TI in this case. So 180 minus 70 minus 45, we get 65 degrees. And that would be our I. The intersection angle is 65 degrees. So we have that, the intersection angle, which is also called the delta. Same thing. From there, we can solve this. We can solve this using this equation. And just note, we have the I angle. And we know that that's the same here. Or we know that's given for the curve. We just do that and find the length. So the length is RI pi over 180. The length is RI. We take the pi over 180. So the length, what's the radius of this curve? That radius is 600 feet. It's given in the problem. So we take 600 feet, we multiply that by the I value, which is the intersection angle of 65 degrees, 65. Then we take that times pi over 180 degrees, and then we find the length. So I'll do this in the calculator, 600 times 65 times pi over 180, and we get about 60, 650 pi over 3, which gives us to about 680. 0.68 feet. And what I would do on the exam is just put, if you put 680, you'll get it right. If you put 681, you'll probably get it right too. 682, they usually have a range, but in this case, I know the six would round up the zero to one. So I'll just put 681 feet. And that would be the answer that I'll fill in the blank. So I'll go up top and put 681 and move on to the next question. That's all for this.